so far whatever uh, representation that we have seen all the numbers they are positive in nature so we did not consider the negative numbers but you, you see that negative numbers are quite common like when you are doing particularly the subtraction operation so you can get a negative number and that negative number also has to be stored in the computer system for negative number storage so we have to think about some special representation and when we are when we are talking about this binary number system then this negative numbers are handled in two different ways one representation is known as ones complement representation ones complement representation and the other representation is known as twos complement representation so in ones complement representation so we take the complement of each of the bits to represent a negative number for example if i have the number say if i have to represent the number minus 4 okay in a 4 bit number system then for, a, for first of all we take the representation of plus 4 in the 4 bit number system so plus 4 in 4 bit number system is represented like this 0 1 0 0 so if you uh, represent if you want to take represent minus 4 then what will happen we will complement each of the bits so we start complementing so this is this bit becomes 1 this is 0 this is 1 and this is 1 so this is the minus 4 representation in the 4 in the ones complement number system so this is very good because uh, the, say i can represent uh, numbers okay so if i have got uh, say uh, so this uh, most significant bit of this numbers uh, of this uh, of any number so if this number b if the number is uh, this, this bit is 0 so this represents positive number and if the most significant bit is 1 that represents negative number so with that understanding so i have got three bits to represent the number so with three bits i can go from say up to the number 7 so if i have got say four bit representation i can uh, represent i can represent the number 0 to 7 that are positive and i can take complements of them and i can represent minus 1 to minus 1 to minus 8 because if i take the representation of 0 in 4 bit number system the number is 0 so if i take one's complement so this will become all one and that is sorry this is this is this is uh, minus 0 so this is wrong so if i uh, if if i want to represent say uh, uh, plus 7 so plus 7 is represented as 0 uh, 0 1 1 1 plus 7 is represented as 0 1 1 1 so if i want to represent minus 7 then it becomes 1 0 0 0 similarly if i want to represent uh, say uh, minus uh, so minus 7 minus 7 is represented like this so this is not minus 8 so this is going up to minus 7 so i can go from 0 to plus 7 and minus 1 to minus 7 this is possible however there is a problem problem is that this 0 representation of 0 so in uh, say a 4 bit number system 0 will be represented by this now if i complement all these bits then what will happen it will become 1 1 1 1 that means so what what does it represent so as per our terminology so this should represent minus 0 so this is a problem because now you have got two representations of the same number because plus 0 and minus 0 that is meaningless so they are same Okay, but as far as the ones complement representation is concerned so you have got two different representations for them so that makes it difficult so because of this so uh, it, we, we went for another representation which is known as twos complement representation in twos complement representation what is done after getting ones complement representation we add one to it so minus four in twos complement representation will be like this so to get the minus 4 in 2's complement first we start with the ones uh, first we start with the representation of plus 4 0 1 0 0 then we take the ones complement then we take take the ones complement which is 1 0 0 0 and then we add a 1 with this so that way it becomes 1 0 0 1 
So, now you have got this uh, two this uh, this number. So, this is the two's complement representation of minus 4 fine. Now, uh, this uh, two's complement representation is it does not suffer from this uh, plus 0 minus 0 representation because the plus 0 is this one. So, plus 0 is uh, represented like this plus 0 is represented by all 0. Now, if you have got minus 0, if you if you try to represent a minus 0, then what we will do is that we will take this uh, minus uh, complement of that. So, I will get this one. Now, for 2's complement representation with this uh, 1 1 1 1, I will add with this 1 1 1 1, I will add a 1. Then when I do this addition, all these bits will become 0 and with a carry of 1. So, if we discard this carry, then it becomes 0. So, though both plus 0 and minus 0, they are represented by the same number which is all 0 in the number system. So, that uh, makes the negative number representation easy. So, there is now there is a question of the range of numbers that you can represent. So, if you have got an n bit representation, if you have got an n bit representation, then this two's complement number system. So, this will allow you to represent a sequence of numbers only. So, if you have if you have got n bit uh, representation, n bit representation, then this two's complement number system tells. So, you can represent minus 2 to the power n to minus 2 to the power uh, n minus 1 to plus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. So, you can represent this range of numbers. For example, if you have got n equal to 4, okay. so if you are do not consider negative numbers, then you can represent 0 to 15. Okay. That is, this 15 is nothing but 2 to the power 4 minus 1, so you can go up to 0 to 15. But if you are representing both positive and negative numbers, then you can go from minus 2 to the power 3, that is minus 8 to 2 to the power n minus 1 that is 8 minus 1 7. So, you can go from minus 8 to plus 7. So, the rest of the numbers cannot be represented using a two's complement number system in n bit. Okay. So, if you want to, uh, to represent larger numbers, then you have to increase the value of n. So, you have to represent it using more uh, bits in the number system. Okay. So, this way we can uh, do this thing. Now, how does it help us is that this in two's complement number system, the addition and subtraction they become similar. So, how so how to do this? Like if I have to uh, do this sum, uh, subtraction say 55 minus say 44, okay. all these numbers are base 10 numbers, all these numbers are base 10 numbers. So, first of all I have to take the binary representation of 55. So, so if I for binary representation, it is easy if you just uh, write down this chart on top 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 as, as the bits we, as we are proceeding towards the left, the weight of the uh, digits are increasing. So, 30 to 55, so this bit must be 1. So, 32 is gone, so you are left with uh, 23. So, this 16 must be equal to 1. Okay. So, 16, 23 minus 16, so you are left with uh, 7. So, so, this is 48, 32 plus 16, 48. Now, I cannot take 8 because that will make it 56. So, like I have to take this 4. So, that will make us uh, uh, 52 and both of these should be 1. So, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So, that is the representation of 55. So, this is 55. So, for 44, again going by the same technique, so 32 plus 8, 40 plus 1, 44. Now, I want to represent minus 44. So, I must have one more uh, digit. So, if I take uh, say a representation of 6 bit, I cannot represent 44 because with 6 bit representation, I can go from minus if you if you follow this formula so if n equal to 6 so it is uh, it will it can go up to minus 2 to the power 5 to 2 to the power 
2 to the power 5 minus 1. So, the range is minus 32 to plus 31. So, 44 minus 44 cannot be represented in this format. So, I have to go for n equal to 7. I have to go for n equal to 7. If I go for n equal to 7, so in that case I will be able to represent minus 2 to the power uh, 6 to 2 to the power 6 minus 1. So, 2, 2 to the power 6 is uh, 64 to minus 64 to plus 63. So, these numbers fit in that range. So, I take a 7 bit represent, uh, 6 bit representation, sorry, 7 bit representation. So, if I want to represent minus 44, then uh, first of all I have to, uh, so plus 44, this is represented as 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So, I take first 1's complement, so that becomes 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then I add 1 with this. So, this becomes 0. 0 1 0 1 0 1. Now, if I add this with uh, 55, so my operation is a subtract operation, but I do an addition. So, addition how do I do? So, with this I add this number 55. So, 55 represented in 7 bit is like this 0 uh, first bit should be 0 1 1 0 1 1 1. Do this addition. So, it is 1 1 0 then there is a carry of 1, then 0, then 1 comes, it becomes a 0, there is a carry of 1. So, this number becomes, this number becomes, so this bit I can ignore. So, you see this, this is nothing but 11 in the decimal number, in the decimal number system this value is 11, 8 plus 2 plus 1. So, this way I can get this addition operation done, uh, addition and subtraction operation done in the same fashion. So, this uh, apparently it seems uh, what is great in it, but the point is when you are having some circuitry in your system, in your processor, then uh, being able to do two operations done by a single piece of hardware is of much Im importance, because then you do not have to have separate adder, separate subtractor. Whereas, for other number system like say once complement number system, so you should your separate your subtraction module should be separate, so it cannot be clubbed with the addition module. Okay. So, that way it uh, creates some difficulty. Next, we will try to solve a few problems on this uh, number system, some uh, class of uh, some uh, problem that will illustrate uh, how these number systems are actually used in different cases. Suppose we are uh, the, f the first problem that we will consider is say this one. It has got, uh, we are given uh, um, uh, two numbers in two different number systems. The base values are not known, but it is said that the numbers are same, the values of the numbers are same, then what will, what can be the base value, fine. So, suppose the number given is, uh, the so equation given is like this 49 to the base x minus 1 is equal to 35 to the base y. So, this uh, first number is a base x minus 1 number system and the second number is a base y number system and the values are same. So, we have to find out the values of x and y. What are the values of probable values of x and y? Of course, the answer may not be unique, but we can try to see what is happening. So, if this has to be true, then if we just uh, apply our knowledge, so of number system. So, 4 into x minus 1 plus 9 is equal to 3 into y plus 5. So, if you simplify it further, so it gives 4 x plus 5 equal to 3 y plus 5. So, this 5 cancels out from two sides. So, we have got 4 x equal to 3 y. So, this is the requirement. So, how can this thing happen? 4 x equal to 3 y. Now, uh, at the same time, we can have uh, say uh, this thing like th this x should be greater or equal 3 y by 4. So, that is the final condition that turns out to be uh, coming here. Now, this condition has to be satisfied. Now, x uh, there is another requirement. So, uh, so there can be many values like I, I, this equation can be satisfied by putting x equal to 3 and y equal to 4. This equation can be satisfied. 
but can it be a solution this x equal to 3 y equal to 4 can it be a solution to this system but it is not because this x minus 1 is the base of this number system and in this base so, so what is the base now if x equal to 3 the base becomes equal to 2 so the allowed digits are only 0 and 1 but here I am using the digits 4 and 9 so the x equal to 3 is not valid similarly y equal to 4 is also not valid because here it is 35 so 5 the base 5 we have got a digit which is 5 uh, so base has to be more than 5 so it cannot be equal to 4 so this solution is incorrect solution so we cannot take this as the solution so another solution uh, so so from this equation i can say that x minus 1 should be greater than uh, should be it should be uh, greater or equal uh, 10 because the 9 is there so the next digit is 10 so from here i can say that x should be greater or equal 11 similarly from this i can say that y should be greater or equal 5 so these are the additional constraint that we have over this solution so we have got three condition now 4x equal to 3y this is one condition x greater or equal 11 y greater or equal 5 so this is the other uh, other two constraints so if you want to satisfy all these constraints then what you get if, as a as a probable solution is x equal to 12 and y equal to uh, say 6 sorry not 6 y equal to 16 so we have got this solution x equal to 12 and y equal to 16 so this way this solution it satisfies uh, this equation 4x equal to 3y at the same time it satisfies these requirements x minus 1 greater or equal 10 and um, y greater or equal 5 both the constraints are satisfied so this is a uh, this is the correct solution okay so you can have other values of x as well like if you uh, if you multiply uh, if you uh, if you go for next higher value so uh, so say x equal to say 36 any any multiple of this say x equal to say multiply both of them by 2 say x equal to 24 y equal to 32 so this is also a solution so this way there are numerous solutions but it is one of those solutions okay so next we will go to another part of uh, so uh, another part of this introduction lecture so which is about the basic digital design so we have seen the numbers they can be stored in the um, computer system or if the processor can process them using two's complement number system but to, for doing the processing we need to have some circuitry so uh, and as i have already said that we will assume that information is available in the digital format so operation that is done is in the digital format only now when i am talking about this uh, digital format data and they are processing so we will be essentially talking about the digital logic circuits okay so there can be uh, so the, so the, this digital logic circuit so there are uh, separate courses for this so we will not go into much detail but the uh, the portions that we may need while uh, while uh, doing our uh, discussion on this uh, microprocessor course so i'll just try to touch upon those concepts now now digital logic means so if this is a circuit which is taken as a digital block so it has got a number of inputs it has got a number of inputs and there can be a number of outputs now uh, unlike analog signal where the values are continuous in nature in digital system the values are discrete and we have got two discrete discrete level so one is called a high logic level sorry one is called a high logic level and the other one is called a low logic level so this high and low logic levels so they are basically uh, two uh, voltage levels that we consider one is high another is low now there are several technologies that have been developed by in which this uh, digital circuits are realized two popular technologies are ttl and cmos so these are the two popular technologies that we have now uh, each of these um, logic uh, uh, this logic families so they have got different interpretations of this high level and low level of signal so basically the signal that you are getting here is nothing but a voltage okay so interpretation of that voltage as logic high or one or logic low or zero so that depends on the uh, level that the particular logic family considers okay 
Now, in case of TTL, this uh, logic high is uh, taken to be anything, anything which is more than 2.4 volt, anything that is greater than 2.4 volt that is taken as logic high and anything which is less than 0.5 volt, anything that is less than 0.5 volt is taken as logic low. Okay. On the other hand, uh, for CMOS and uh, the, here the, the TTL family, the supply voltage, so the DC supply voltage is DC supply voltage is 5 volt. So, with respect to that we have got this uh, high logic level and low logic level and this CMOS uh, it has got uh, the cost consideration that is anything which is more than 0.33 sorry 0 uh, 0.3 into into VDD sorry 0.33 into VDD minus VSS. So, that is taken as logic uh, anything that is more that it is less than this anything less than this is taken as logic low. So, less than this less than this is low logic low and anything which is more than 0 0.7 into this quantity anything that is more than 0 0.7 into VDD minus VSS. So, that is taken as logic high more than this quantity. Where this VDD, VSS, so they are actually if this is a circuit then it will have a supply voltage. So, in case of CMOS the, the there are two points one is called VDD and another is VSS. So, the, in general this VSS point is the ground point and VDD is the supply voltage point. So, that way it is similar to we have got say in case of TTL we normally call it VCC. So, but in this case we will call it VDD. Okay. So, this VDD and VSS, so difference between these two. So, the ground uh, the VSS may not be equal to 0, VSS may have some other value. So, difference between VDD and VSS, so that is taken as the difference, otherwise it is same. So, you see that there is a difference in the uh, logic levels and uh, CMOS also has got various technologies and in different technologies these VDD, VSS values uh, they change. Okay. So, as a result we have got uh, different uh, uh, as, as the technology scaling is progressing. So, now the supply voltage is uh, in the range of 1 volt. So, naturally this high and low levels are much less compared to what you have in the TTL. So, of course, each of these families they have got their own advantages and disadvantages we will not go into that and uh, both the families are used though for circuit implementation it is mostly CMOS circuit, but for the output stages of the circuits many cases we go for uh, TTL logic as well. Okay. So, so, looking into the digital family any digital circuit it can again be classified into two classes one is called the combinational circuit class combinational class and the other one is the sequential class. Okay. So, combinational circuit means there is no memory. So, the circuit does not memorize its previous state. So, wherever it was, so from there it uh, just uh, produces the next uh, the looking into the current input it will produce the output. So, here output depends on current input only output depends on current input only. Whereas, in case of uh, um, sequential circuit, so output depends on current state of the uh, system, current state plus input, it depends on both the quantities. Okay. So, it is a, a combinational circuit and sequential circuit. Now, for combinational circuit part, so it is generally they are, they are uh, realized using something called logic gates and there are several types of logic gates that are that are there. So, you may be familiar with the type of logic gate like AND. So, this is a this is a symbol of an AND logic gate, the symbol of an AND logic gate and if I have got two inputs A and B and the output as says uh, F, 
then it is represented in the form of a truth table. So, in the truth table we have got column corresponding to each of the primary each of the inputs to the gate and a column corresponding to the output. Now, we list down all possible uh, combinations of this input values. So, if it is uh, so they can be 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1. So, in general we will use 0 to represent the low value and 1 to represent the logic high value. Now, this AND gate says that this output should be 0, this will also be 0, in this case also it should be 0, whenever both the inputs are 1 then only the output should be 1. So, this is the AND gate. Similarly, there are many other gates like say there is one gate called OR gate, so which is represented like this A and B are the two inputs and F is the output, so this is the OR gate and here the truth table will be something like this. So, this is 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1 and in case of OR gate whenever any of the inputs is, uh, is 1, so output will be 1. So, this output will be 0, but in all other cases the output is equal to 1. Another uh, there are uh, other gates like we have got NAND gate which is the invert of AND gate, okay, which is the invert of AND. So, in case of NAND, so if, if I represent this by G, then this truth table will be modified to be something like G. So, all these will be 1 and when this was giving me a 0, whenever, the, whenever this uh, was giving me a 0, so 1, so in case of AND gate, so here it will give me a 0. So, that is the NAND function. Similarly, if you take uh, the NOR gate, NOR gate is nothing but this is the OR gate and there is an inversion at the top of it. So, this is the NOR gate. Another very interesting gate is the XOR gate where I have got again two input or, or more or there can be more sorry this is not correct. So, we have got an XOR gate where where say suppose we have got two inputs and here the output will be 1 provided only one of them is equal to 1. So, this the truth table if I draw, so this A, B and F, so this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, when this uh, F is uh, when the, whenever, so this is 0 because both the inputs are 0, this is 1, this is 1, but this is again 0, 1, 1 is again 0 telling that the inputs are same. This XOR gate it has got a very important application when we are going into uh, this uh, microprocessor designs like because you see it can compare between two inputs A and B. So, if you are uh, trying to check whether two inputs are same or not then this XOR gate is the straight away the answer. So, this is uh, you can take the XOR of the two numbers or two inputs and if the answer is 0 that means they are same, if the answer is 1 that means the values are not same. So, that way XOR gate has got very good application. So, other gates similarly we can have XNOR gate as well where at the uh, at the X, at the XOR gate output you take a bubble. So, if this is the um, uh, XOR gate so you take a bubble here. So, that is the XNOR gate okay. and of course, another gate that we did not talk about explicitly is the inverter. So, which is a single input single output uh, circuit. So, inverter means whatever be the input the output will be the invert of that. 